Welcome to hour number two, the morning after, live right here on this Thursday on Sports Grid, Sirius XM, channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, and all across the Sports Grid network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Thursday, live on the morning after. Major League Baseball, the daily slate as we go through the home stretch of this MLB regular season. Just about 40 games left, which means we've played 120 plus. I have never seen a line quite like this for a Major League Baseball regular season game so far this season. Jacob deGrom is getting the start for the New York Mets at home today at Citi Field against the Colorado Rockies. Now, the Rockies are not a great baseball team, below 500. The Mets have the second-best record in the National League, and Jacob deGrom is one of the best pitchers on planet Earth. But the Mets are a minus 450 favorite at home today. Let me say that again. Minus 450, a a $4.5 favorite at home today today against the Colorado Rockies. And the total is at seven. Even if you thought to yourself, all right, that's way too big of a money line. Let me go back the Mets on the run line. They're laying the run and a half, of course, as the home favorite. It's still minus 182 of juice to back the Amazons at home. And maybe it's that Jacob deGrom perspective. Anytime deGrom day happens for the New York Mets, that line is going to be heavily in their favor Jacob deGrom so far for the Mets this year made his first start just over a month ago has made four starts for New York so far this season a two and one win loss record 23rd and a 23 and a third innings of work so far with a two three one ERA 37 strikeouts in those four starts his worst start I guess you could say came against the Braves last week in Atlanta. He has not pitched in about a week's time because he made that start on Thursday against the Braves in Atlanta. They rested him a little bit. Taiwan Walker got the start in that second and final game of the Subway Series in the Bronx against the Yankees on Tuesday evening. Now Jacob deGrom ready to go and the Mets again a minus 450 favorite at home today against the Colorado Rockies. And their lead in the National League East has dwindled to just a game and a half over those Atlanta Braves. Minus 280, still the favored number in New York's favor, but Atlanta has carved their way back into this divisional race for the NL East top spot. The top spot in the American League right now is the Houston Astros, a heavy favorite at home today as well, but not anywhere near minus 450 the Astros minus 178 live right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook against the Minnesota Twins and for a good portion of this season it was the Twins in the top spot in the American League Central but Minnesota has lost five straight games they sit four games back of that first place position in the American League Central currently occupied by the Cleveland Guardians Cleveland a minus 175 favorite the Astros in heavy command of the American League West a 12 and a half game lead over the Seattle Mariners and again the Astros the top spot in the American League postseason picture with a three and a half game advantage over the New York Yankees why is that important well as we look at the AL pennant odds the Astros the betting favorites at plus 145 the Yankees 65 cents behind at plus 210 but in a presumed American League championship series between these two ball clubs it would run through Houston and home field advantage on that diamond in Houston might just be a discernible difference. A welcome to our Sports Grid Radio audience here, the second hour of the morning after, live on this Thursday on Sports Grid. Thank you for joining us here on Sirius XM Channel 159, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates as well, now in the mix, and I am Ben Stevens. A bit of breaking news to bring you here on this Thursday morning, coming down within the last couple of minutes around the NBA. We brought you the report from yesterday. It was feared that Chet Holmgren had torn ligaments in his foot, and they were trying to establish a timetable for his rookie campaign in 2022-23 for Oklahoma City. Well, now that fear is a worst fear for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Chet Holmgren will miss the entirety of this NBA season, his rookie year, 
in the NBA. Torn ligaments in that foot that he suffered this past weekend in Seattle at Jamal Crawford's crossover pro-am. He was not the only NBA player there. LeBron James was in action. DeJounte Murray was in action. Paolo Bancaro, a fellow rookie who went number one overall ahead of Chet Holmgren going number two overall to OKC in June's 2022 NBA draft. A terrible break for Chet Holmgren and the Oklahoma City Thunder. There was some excitement around this young core in OKC. Josh Giddy, SGA, Shea Gilgis-Alexander, and Chet Holmgren with all that he could do in the versatile skill set that he has. But the one question about Chet, standing at seven feet tall, was his frame. Could it endure NBA competition? I'm not going to make the outlandish statement and say this one specific injury and a weird incident in a pro-am game in Seattle over the weekend is going to mean something for the entirety of Chet Holmgren's career, but it is a bad, bad blow and a tough break to start off his NBA career for the Oklahoma City Thunder. Quickly, a look at the NBA Rookie of the Year odds. They were Locked just moments ago, they are back up. Paolo Bancaro is the favorite at plus 200. Chet Holmgren not on the front page of that list. We go to college football. Up next, week zero is just two days away. CFB predictions next. early line this non-story is officially over tom brady went away why because he can he's tom brady his wife very publicly has wanted him to retire he did and then he unretired so in a meaningless week of practice he went out and was able to spend some time with his family make sure that everything is good it was reported to be a work-life balance it was reported that the bucks knew it was coming only on sports grid your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The morning after. Who wins the American League Central? I recently had a change of heart here, and it's the Cleveland Guardians. I think that the Guardians are going to win the American League Central. I think that what they do in terms of offensive depth, I know we talked about that with Houston a couple weeks ago. I think that Cleveland runs out an incredibly deep lineup. I also think that they run out a very solid front three in that rotation with Shane Bieber, Tristan McKenzie, and Cal Quattro. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Michael Pittman did put together somewhat of an impressive season. He ended up being wide receiver 13 in fantasy. I, I guess what owners are hoping for based on his positional rank going into this year is that he just is a little bit more consistent and honestly, where he's being drafted, giving you about, what, 15 to 20% more numbers, about 1,200 yards, 8 to 10 touchdowns. The Sports Grid Network.
Just two days out from the start of the 2022 college football season. Two days away from week zero on Saturday, August 27th. The excitement builds in college football. And earlier this week on the FanDuel Sportsbook, make college football playoff odds were put out for the first time all off season long in the final days of this college football off season. We break them down now. We paint the path to the playoff in college football here on a Thursday, live on the morning after on SportsGrid because that path is equally important. Knowing what the best and brightest in college football must do to impress the college football playoff selection committee using the eight-year history and the criteria we have seen for resumes in years past. And you must correlate those markets because the markets add up in those prices. We begin with three of the four best odds available on the college football playoff market and to win a national championship and correlate their odds to winning a conference crown. Alabama has the best price to make the college football playoff at minus 350. It should be no surprise. The Crimson Tide have qualified for seven of the eight college football playoffs in its history. Ohio State, minus 280, the second best price. Clemson is plus 125, the fourth best odds, and we'll get to another team that makes up the third best price in just a moment. But there you see Alabama in the SEC to win the Tide's third straight conference championship. That's minus 140 this year. Alabama has won six of the last eight SEC titles. Ohio State has won five of the last eight Big Ten championships. They are minus 210 to make it six of the last nine that minus 210 number on the Buckeyes has only grown in favor of Ohio State no team has better odds of winning any conference in the country a power five league a group of five conference than Ohio State does to win the big 10 so you can see how those odds add up to get Alabama and Ohio State into the college football playoff the same argument can be made for Clemson who has made six of the eight college football playoffs all six years that Clemson has won the ACC because they did not win it last year in 2021 that snapped a six year streak of Clemson being the champs in the Atlantic Coast Conference and they are minus 155 favored to do so this season if Clemson does most likely they will be in the college football playoff it is very difficult for the college football playoff committee to keep a one loss Power five conference champion out of the college football playoff. And there is a good chance that Alabama and Ohio State could be unbeaten in the regular season. Alabama will be a double digit favorite in each of its 12 games. Ohio State has five lines available already for the 2022 college football campaign on FanDuel. The Buckeyes shortest spread 13 points in the final Saturday in October on the road in Happy Valley. That should show you the level of expectation for two teams, Alabama minus 350, Ohio State minus 280 to make the college football playoff. Last year, out of the SEC, Alabama won the conference championship, knocking off Georgia. It was Georgia that got the last laugh in the national title game as the dogs were victorious over Alabama, granting Georgia its first national title in over four years. Decade. So two teams out of the SEC in Georgia was a one loss non conference champion, but because they were undefeated in the regular season, Georgia got the blessing of the college football playoff committee. Here are what the odds say for UGA entering 2022. That win total is 10 and a half. You can see how heavily juiced the over is at minus 250. The only reason it's not 11 or 11 and a half is because to go over that win total mandates another undefeated season for Kirby Smart and the Dogs. But you see their odds to win the division, the SEC East division within that conference, minus 550, very heavily favored to at least appear in its second consecutive SEC title game for Georgia. But they are not the betting favorite, nor the odds on favorite, to win the SEC championship this year. As we showed, that is Alabama at minus 140. Georgia is plus 160. Yet the dogs are still in that odds on minus money category to make the CFP at minus 
160. Again, we have an eight-year history of the college football playoff. Two teams out of the same conference have made it two times in that eight-year span. It has been Alabama and Georgia, both hailing from the SEC. Both times we have seen it happen, but it is a rather rare occasion. So that conference path, A conference championship is incredibly important to making the college football playoff. And generally, your entire regular season factors into that. Not just what you do in your conference slate to appear in that conference title game or ultimately win that conference crown, but being just a one-loss conference champion in the Power 5 realm. Because we have never seen a team in the eight-year history of the college football playoff suffer two regular season losses and be a part of that magic number of four to make the college football playoff. So let's go to the teams that have the next best odds outside of that top four to make the college football playoff. USC at plus 340. The Trojans also the fifth best price to win a national championship and to win at least 10 games is minus 120. I'll detail why that's peculiar in just a moment. Oklahoma is plus money to win double-digit games this year, but has the sixth best price at plus 450 to make the college football playoff. Now, USC is the betting favorite to win the Pac-12, plus 170. Oklahoma is the betting favorite to win the Big 12 at plus 190. OU's win total is 8.5. The over has the heavy juice at minus 180. It is not a leap by any means to think that Oklahoma can win 10 games this year, and you must win at least 10 games. You must win at least 11 regular season games and a conference championship, at least based on the track record we have from the College Football Playoff Selection Committee, again, in the eight-year history of the CFP. It is interesting, though, to see the Trojans favored to win double-digit games, minus 120, to get to at least... 10 wins when USC's win total is nine and a half and the under has the juice on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Again, there's a lot of optimism. There's a lot of positivity for the Trojans entering 2022, but a discrepancy in those markets. So that doesn't necessarily add up. You could make that same argument based on national championship odds and qualifying to even play for a national championship in the college football playoff for two more teams. Texas A&M is ranked sixth in the preseason AP poll. A&M has the sixth best odds to win a national championship, but the eighth best price to make the college football playoff. Plus 650, those CFP odds, 25 to one to win the national championship. Notre Dame is 15 to one to make the college football playoff, but 60 to one to win the college football playoff national title. 60 to one relatively long odds but it's the ninth best number on the board 15 to 1 to make the college football playoff is interesting for the fighting irish because it is tied for the 15th best price in the country behind the likes of nc state and texas and miami and penn state and wisconsin along the likes of tennessee and oregon Very interesting where Notre Dame finds themselves in those correlated markets because if you make the college football playoff, you're one of those final four teams. Of course, you're one of the four remaining that even has a hope of winning a national championship. I said A&M at plus 650 was the eighth best price. It's because two teams in Michigan and Utah are tied for the seventh best number. Technically, the Aggies have the ninth best price on the board. All of that historical perspective and how those markets correlate that you must handicap before you lay a wager on making the college football playoff. On Saturday, our new College Football Today show, myself, Joe Lisi, and Kevin Walsh will give you our final four, our college football playoff predictions. It starts at 9 a.m. Eastern. Pro Football Today is on Sunday. That's with Mike Blewett. He's here next. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. 
we saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game penguins. time decisions. That's bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Vandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it four and a half. In game, four live, wins. prime oh, yeah, time. The, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. Maurice Allen, 2015 2016 European Long Drive Tour champion, 2017. World number one. Me personally, I keep my game face on me all the time. Especially coming out of the bunker, leaving the range, or even leaving the course. What's your story? Pharrell, coast to coast. Do you believe he has the stones to fire both of them? His dad would have. I don't. Uh, I think Boone. I think Boone is safe, no matter what happens. You know, maybe if they don't win the East, but that's almost impossible. So I think he's safe. Uh, Cashman's contract, I believe, is uh, up uh, after this year. Maybe I'm wrong about that. I would think he'd be in more, uh, a lot more trouble than, than Boone would. The Sports Grid Network. Football is always so much fun because you see new players literally every single year, and the anticipation is stupendous once it gets underway. And we're really close to that. A 12:30 game overseas this weekend between Northwestern and Nebraska. And yeah, you're going to settle into Connecticut playing Utah State with a 27 and a half point line. Everybody gets in the way. Big Ten, Pac-12. We cannot wait for this. Only on Sports Grid. Welcome back to the morning after live right here on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. As I said there quickly before the break, college football today, each and every Saturday this fall, starting at 9 a.m. Eastern Time, up until games begin at noon. It's myself, Joe Lisi, and Kevin Walsh. Old K Dubs is also on our Sunday football show with Mike Blewett. Pro football today, the most premier NFL pregame show you can find out there on Sports Grid starting this Sunday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. They'll look and they'll take this big picture discussion into the regular season, which Mike Blewett, who joins us here now on the morning after on this Thursday, starts in just two weeks' time. Blewett, football, early and often. College into the NFL. It's a wonderful time to be talking pigskin with you. Great time of year. I'm I'm pretty much appearing on every show on the network this week, so people are going to be pretty tired of me by the weekend, uh, and then they'll get a full dose on Sunday. So excited to be on, obviously, uh, with Kevin and with you here today. It is going to be a great show. Pro Football Today, again, each and every Sunday, 10 a.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Eastern time, right until kick for your Sunday slate in the National Football League. And Blue, we have the final week of the preseason beginning here tonight in Kansas City between the Packers and the Chiefs. Two of those teams have the five best odds or two of the five best odds to win a Super Bowl this season. The Chiefs, the third best price at 10 to 1. The Packers, the fifth best number at 12 to 1. And we correlate this to the conference championship markets. The Bills are the favorites to win a Super Bowl, also the favorites in the AFC. Tampa, the favorites in the NFC and have the second best price to win Super Bowl 57. 
of these five frontrunners that you see right here, whose path to appearing in Super Bowl 57 is the hardest? The hardest is a really good question. I'd take the Bucks and the Rams out of it, uh, interestingly, because I think it is conceivable that they meet for for the appearance in the Super Bowl. So two of the top five yep. teams obviously meeting off against one another would make that a difficult matchup. I just think that the AFC, we all agree, is pretty loaded at the top. We've talked uh, many times on this show about how tough the opening part of the schedule is for the Bills. Those first seven games are really tough. So yep. I think there are times when it's going to look very difficult for the Bills, even if they sort of get out of the muddle of all of these different teams and, and show that they are the best team in the league. I think there's times where they're going to have some nip and tuck battles, including week one against the Rams, the Packers and the Bucks. I would just almost make the same point for, for them. I, I think there's been enough personnel changes on those teams. Obviously the Devonte Adams loss with the Packers and the Bucks yep. with their offensive line getting changed over a little bit and not having Chris Godwin and Mike Evans to start the season as obviously lost Gronk as well to retirement. I think it's being a little bit underplayed in the marketplace. The Tom Brady absence from training camp is unusual, but I'm not panicked about that. I think the Bucks really are a good team, and I think they're head and shoulders above their divisional competition, and that's why yep. their path is relatively easy. I will just say that in the marketplace, I feel like because we expect Tom Brady to be great again, that it's being a little underplayed in terms of their ultimate chances to win the conference championship in the Super Bowl, how many losses that they've had. And the path to that top spot in the NFC has to go through those regular season markets because the Bucs are minus 270 to win the NFC South, the best odds of any team to win any division in the National Football League. But it's the Buffalo Bills, Blewett, that have the best odds to have the best regular season record this year in 2022. The favorites there, as they are in the AFC and the Super Bowl market, at plus 450. They have the highest win total on the board on FanDuel at 11.5, and, and the over has the juice in that number. Blewett, you are a great futures forecaster in finding your bits and pieces for those season-long tickets. How much do you look at the regular season, what those win totals say, and how that market correlates to the ultimate prizes of winning a conference championship and ultimately appearing in a Super Bowl? I think it's a pretty fascinating market. I will say that I hit this last year, but I did bet it in the middle of the season. I bet the Bucks to have the best regular season record. They split it with the Packers, so I didn't get a full payout, but I still got a W. And I would say that What's interesting to me about this is a very hard call. My favorite bet that's correlated to this in some way, in some ways, Ben, is not even this specific market. It's looking mm. at the coaches market, coach of the year. And I think Sean McDermott at 30 to 1, if the Bills are superior to everyone and rip off a 14 or 15 win season, which is a lot to yeah. ask, especially considering the beginning of their season, is a huge payout. If they win the division and they're 14 and 15 win season, I get that there's high expectations, but who else is going to get it? We're going to give it to Brandon Staley because he went 10 and 7. I, I just <laughs> I, I want to take a shot with a long shot in that market. And I think Sean McDermott is pretty interesting for me in that coach's market. I'm sorry it doesn't quite answer your question, but that's how I would answer it. I think the Bucks really have an opportunity to rip off the most regular season wins again, just because I think they are really are head and shoulders above their divisional competition. That being said, they did lose both games to the Saints in the regular season last year. In fact, they have lost all four regular season matchups against the Saints in the two years of Tom Brady's tenure in Tampa Bay. Tom got the last laugh in the divisional round in 2020 on the way to the Bucks Super Bowl championship and Super Bowl 55. But Blue, it does answer my question because it's value through correlating markets because we know the last five winners of the NFL AP Coach of the Year Award have all reached the postseason. So there's some flashy young names, but if your team's not in the playoffs, you don't really have a shot at winning that award. And although Buffalo blew it, like we have said, the Super Bowl favorites, the AFC favorites, the AFC East heavy odds on favorites, the favorites to have the best 
regular season record in the NFL. Buffalo is not the favorite, though, to be the last remaining undefeated team because of that difficult start you mentioned. The shortest odds here, Tampa Bay at plus 600. Is this a market that grabs your attention still here as we get ready for the regular season starting in two weeks? That is a pretty interesting one. But to be fair, as we're going through, if we're going to hammer the Bills schedule, I understand the Buccaneers is a little bit easier. By the way, I, I'm taking the points in week one with the Rams, so I don't even know if the Bills are going to get to 1-0, uh, let alone be you. the last undefeated team. Uh, but the Bucks start at Dallas, at New Orleans. We just mentioned that they've lost four in a row in the regular season to New Orleans and Dallas. Uh, we can talk about Dallas maybe a little later in the segment. They've got a lot of issues right now. But then they play the Packers yep. and the Chiefs. It's not an easy first month. So if they're 4-0 after the first month with all of these players that are coming back from injury and figuring out the new offensive line, then I'll really be impressed. Then I'm going to want to jump on that Bucks' best regular season record. Uh, it gets a little easier after that for them, Falcons, Steelers, Panthers, and the like. But that first month isn't easy. So I, I don't even know that the Bucks and the Bills are your two best options. The Chargers are obviously getting a lot of love in the betting market from Brandon Staley to divisional and Super Bowl and conference odds. And I would say that their schedule as you go through it, they've got Raiders at Chiefs. That's week two. Yep. So we're That's already at two divisional going on the road in the division and winning games in September. I, I'll, I have to see it to believe it with the Chargers. It is fair to ask to see it first from the Chargers because they are a very up and down team. The Buccaneers open up with the Cowboys in the star. That first Sunday night football game of the year. Tampa right now, a one and a half point favorite. The Chargers are a two and a half point underdog on the road in Arrowhead against the Chiefs. That Thursday night football game, week number two. Let's talk about the Dallas Cowboys, Blewett, because we know the weird history of the weirdest division in the NFL, the NFC East. We have not seen a repeat champion in the NFC East since the year 2004. And the Cowboys mm. won the division last year in 2021. The Cowboys will be without their all-pro left tackle for a considerable amount of this season. Breaking news this morning, Tyron Smith will be out until December at the earliest, a torn hamstring. He will undergo surgery. He suffered that injury yesterday in practice. So, Blue, as we look through these divisional match bets here and you evaluate the Cowboys and other teams in the AFC North like the Ravens and the Bengals who were the upstart team a season ago what do you look for in these divisional markets that can present some value before we get going in the regular season obviously we've got a few tight races here when it comes to the odds I am taking the Bengals I am taking the Eagles so I do not have the favorites in those two divisions uh, I, I've long said I think the Colts are going to do some damage. I actually have some long-range Colts bets, which I understand the Colts aren't the best team, but I have some long-range bets on them uh, in order to win the AFC and, and really surpass their win total. I think they're going to have a good season. Uh, the Rams-Niners is pretty interesting to me. Do the Rams yeah. have that hangover? People are doubting the Niners in a significant way at times, uh, maybe because they're unsure of Trey Lance. I'm a little bit more sure that that offense is going to be pretty good. And I think that one is a pretty fascinating to me. The two Western divisions, I think the two most fascinating. And Ben, just a yeah. little nugget there, since I told you I think the Eagles are going to win the division. Take a look at the Eagles' opening schedule. Those first six games are pretty navigable for them. So if the Eagles were 5-0, and 6-0, and it wouldn't stun anybody. And that could be a little bit of a longer-range, last undefeated team bet. And look at that last remaining unbeaten team, by the way. The Niners start off week three of the preseason tonight. A three-and-a-half-point road favorite blew it on the road in Houston. You excited for the ending of week three of the preseason? How can you not get excited about the Houston Texans in week three of the preseason? How could you not? They're both perfect. They're both unbeaten. Lived. Texans plus three and a half. Blew it. That's my pick for tonight. More of the morning after up next. The morning after. Baker Mayfield, the starting quarterback for the Carolina Panthers. Now, Kev, we know that week one opener 
for the Panthers is against Baker's former team. What do you make of the storylines for Baker Mayfield entering that week one opener as the starter in Carolina? You know, B- Baker is such a storyline guy, right? Such a narrative guy. It, it almost, it couldn't have been anybody other. The Sports Grid Network. You might be the next daily fantasy millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Pharrell, coast to coast. This is yet, I'm told, the fourth, at least the fourth different offense that Mayfield has to learn as a professional in his five years. And from the very start, Pharrell, they kind of knew it. I'm told after two weeks, he was so dominant over Darnold. It wasn't bad, but the fact that matters is his timing was good. I'm told a couple of the throws are a little bit high. They feel that the time will be better as these guys work together. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. The running back that appears to make the biggest jump maybe in the last two months, uh, maybe in all of fantasy, honestly, Davis, is Damian Pierce, who played for the University of Florida. And the beef that went on at Florida, Davis, is that people wanted to see him get the ball more. He really was never a primary running back at Florida. He's sort of a throwback guy in the sense that you give him the ball, he's never going to lose yards. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The team that's got a lot of people excited, Nebraska. The second best odds to win the Big Ten West. Donnie, last year this team won three football games. Only one win in Big Ten play. But if you're looking like a team total guy like myself, even a win total guy, you're going to be looking at Nebraska saying there something has to change. And maybe the quarterback changes what they needed. Only on Sports Grid. Pro Football Doc has found its new home right here with Sports Injury Central. And with that comes our expansion into other sports. Sports Injury Central will give you nonstop exclusive injury analysis from experienced team doctors from all three major sports. Doctors with resumes that include teams like the Chicago Bulls, the Texas Rangers, and the LA Chargers. So gain a fantasy DFS and betting edge right now for free at SICscore.com. One last week of NFL preseason action before we get done with ever saying preseason again until next August, but then the regular season on the horizon. NFL week three of the preseason starts tonight. We have the Chiefs and the Packers, the Niners and the Texans. And then two weeks from this very day is the start of the 2022 NFL regular season. We are oh so close to real NFL football, although you know my thoughts on the preseason. I love football in every single form. It will be great to have that back in our lives tonight. Welcome back, by the way, to the morning after here, live on this Thursday on SportsGrid. The first game up is in Arrowhead between the Chiefs and the Packers. The second game of the evening, kicking off a mere 30 minutes later, in Houston, Texas tonight between those Texans hosting the San Francisco 49ers a battle of preseason perfect unbeaten teams both the Niners and the Texans 2 and 0 oh, so far this preseason one will have a perfect preseason in 2022 and as the odds makers see it that will be the San Francisco 49ers a three and a half point road favorite in Houston tonight minus 175 on that money line to win outright that total is lofty by preseason standards 41 in a hook tonight between San Francisco and Houston but here's what I'll say and I'll dive into it a little bit later on as we round out our two hours together here in my bye 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 best bet a little teaser for you if you'll allow 
The Houston Texans have a four and a half win total this year. That is the lowest on the board. I will not be actively seeking opportunities, probably, for the most part, to be betting on the Texans on a week-to-week basis, although Houston last year, as an underdog, 8-8 eight and eight against the spread. When teams are an even 500, when booked as an underdog, it shows they're competitive and profitable from that standpoint. So I'm not going to be actively seeking prices on the Houston Texans. But when you have a team that is expected to be bad by the regular season numbers, the preseason is their time to shine. The reason they're expected to be bad is because the talent up and down the roster maybe isn't the upper tier in the NFL. They're trying to figure out their 53-man roster. Everybody is competing for those similar spots, and they are showing that high level of competition here in the preseason. So although Houston has the longest odds to win the AFC at 100-1 to and the longest odds to win the Super Bowl at 300-1, to and again, the lowest win total on the board at 4.5 right now on FanDuel, I am going to be looking at Houston tonight. One final time, for competition to end out the preseason to prove to Lovey Smith and the organization there in Houston, Texas, that they can be a part of this 53 man roster. It's why you can have bad teams and bet on them in the preseason. And it's why the Texans are a perfect two and oh right now. And they have been competitive at each and every stage so far throughout the opening two games of their preseason. And please I beg of you, keep an eye on Damian Pierce, the rookie running back out of Florida for Houston. He is a game breaker, and we will certainly look at him to find some profitability on the Texans tonight. Either getting three in a hook, past that key number of three if you want to take an underdog, or maybe even just outright plus 150 on the money line. We know the Niners' expectations are much higher for 2022. The second best odds in the NFC West a team that played the Los Angeles Rams in the NFC Championship game. So the Niners and the Rams will go head-to-head again for that top spot in the NFC West. Entering last year, the NFC West was expected to be the most competitive division in the National Football League. It turned out to pretty much be that case because three of the four teams, the Rams won the division, the Niners and the Cardinals were wildcard teams, three of the four out of the NFC West made the NFC postseason picture. That is much the same expectation for the AFC West this year. Who's going to win the division? Well, the Chiefs have won it for six straight years. Of course, the Chiefs at home tonight inside Arrowhead for week three of the preseason. At home in Kansas City and in KC right now is where we find our good friend Carrington Harrison. Here to detail and preview week three of the preseason starting tonight inside Arrowhead and a bigger picture discussion from what we have seen throughout training camp and preseason for the Chiefs moving forward for the 2022 regular season. Carrington Harrison, thank you so much for joining us once again on the morning after. I think he's muted right now. We'll get back to Carrington Harrison here in just a second. Oh, technology. At times, it is a beautiful thing. It allows us to connect with our friends, even in Kansas City, Missouri. But we'll get Carrington back on the show in just a moment. I do want to go through a market that I just saw become available on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Under the Season Specials tab in the National Football League, there is now odds to bet teams not just to make the postseason, but in which spot they get into the playoffs as a wild card team, perhaps, in the AFC. And one thing that stands out off the bat is that three teams out of the AFC West all have the same price to be a wild card team in 2022. The Chargers, the Chiefs, and the Broncos, all at two to one. Now, the Chiefs are the favorites to win the AFC West at plus 155. The Chargers not all that far behind, less than a dollar back of KC at plus 240, and Denver the third best price at plus 260. So it is interesting to see Kansas City have the same exact price as those two other contenders in the AFC West, LA and Denver, to make the AFC wild card. All three of those teams right now at plus 200. The Raiders are three to one, and let's not forget the Raiders were a wild card team 
last season. Las Vegas has the seventh or the fourth best price right now to win the AFC West, the fourth out of all four teams in that division. Bear with me here. I'm expected to do a lot more talking now than I had originally planned on, so I might need some water in a second, but we'll get through this segment together. The fourth best prices, I guess you could say. Yeah, time for the fourth best price between the Dolphins and the Patriots to make it AFC wildcard spot at plus 260. It's interesting, though, because the Bengals and the Ravens are at plus 310. So you have to correlate those markets to the odds of making the postseason because the Dolphins and the Pats have the ninth and 10th best odds right now to make the AFC postseason as it stands. But their odds to be a wild card team is really their only path to get there, right? Because the Buffalo Bills are a greater than $2 favorite to win the AFC East. All of that correlated in this market right now to figure out what the playoff picture is going to look like within the AFC. So again, the final week of the preseason tonight begins inside Arrowhead in Kansas City between the Chiefs and the Packers. Green Bay currently a one and a half point road favorite on the FanDuel Sportsbook against KC with that total standing at 30 five and a hook compare the two totals tonight 35 and a half for the Chiefs and the Packers 41 and a half for the Niners and the Texans and the Chiefs so far this preseason one and one the same for the Packers as well we saw a decent amount of Patrick Mahomes in the second week of the preseason for the Chiefs against the Commanders last week he played the first two possessions of the game threw for two touchdowns and was pretty good against the commanders. And you see those props for this year on Patrick Mahomes, 4,500 and a half, 34 and a half touchdown passes, and the interception total, a number that Patrick went over last year with 13, he hopes to stay under this year at 10 and a hook. He went over 34 and a half passing touchdowns last year, finishing with 37, well over that passing yards prop, finishing with more than 4,800 Passing yards. Patrick Mahomes is always going to carry lofty expectations entering a new NFL season and on a week-to-week basis. And by those high expectations last year, it was seen to maybe not be the most successful season for Patrick Mahomes. But KC still hosted the AFC title game. I know they did not win it, but they still hosted the AFC championship game for a fourth consecutive season. And Patrick Mahomes still threw for more than 48 100 yards unfortunately based on technology we will not hear from Carrington Harrison today but we hope to have him back on the show here very very soon allow me to think about how we proceed through the rest of this segment now thank you for bearing with us here on the morning after again live on this Thursday on sports grid so you need to correlate all the markets I've said correlate so many times today and the Chiefs have dominated the AFC West for the last six seasons they have won the divisional title six consecutive years and in the last four years in which they have hosted the AFC championship game the Chiefs have won exactly 12 games each of those seasons the win total this year is 10 and a half the over has a slight bit of juice they are the favorites to win the AFC West division at plus 155 there are other markets to try to figure out how the AFC West is going to play out. Because if, like me, you believe the Chiefs can win this division for a seventh straight year and deserve to be the betting favorites, and until I actually see Brandon Staley accurately represent and manage a football game and not cough away a chance at the postseason in what should have been the tie game against the Las Vegas Raiders, and I see the Denver Broncos prove themselves offensively, even with Russell Wilson, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt to Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid, Eric Bieniemy, everybody back on the Chiefs offense, even without Tyreek Hill this year, in terms of winning the AFC West. But we are trying to figure out maybe then who that second team is and how many teams out of the AFC West make it to the postseason. There is a strong potential that three of the four from the AFC West get there this year. Three of the four teams, the Chiefs, the Chargers, and Broncos, favored to make the postseason in their make playoff odds so maybe you think the Broncos have the second best chance of getting to the postseason but the Chiefs win the division and we shake out that order as such plus 470 for the Chiefs and the Chargers plus 500 for the Chiefs 
and the Broncos. If the Chargers somehow pull off the win in this division, in the AFC West, it would be the first time in a while. The Chargers haven't made the postseason in near a decade or just one time in, I think, the last eight years, whatever my earlier handicapping was. Can't wait to get to the commercial break here on the morning after. So let's look at whatever we decide to do here in the final AFC West odds. How many teams could theoretically compete for that division? Are all four teams in play? I would say don't sleep on the Raiders. Once again, it's the same point we've made often throughout this preseason. We expect three of these four teams potentially to get to the postseason. How will this incredibly competitive division affect the overall record for those wild card standings or the divisional standings first and foremost? But the Raiders were the second playoff team out of the AFC West last year, the only team outside of the Chiefs who won the division to make the AFC postseason. Las Vegas got better this offseason, a ton better when you add Devontae Adams to that offense. You add Chandler Jones on the other side of the football. If the defense can improve, the Raiders are going to be in that race each and every leg of the way this year. Those are the Chiefs' odds to have a win total, to win the division, to win a conference, and to win the Super Bowl at 10-1. to All right, we're just going to get to the break here. We'll get to the bye-bye-bye best bet for preseason week number three. Thanks for bearing through that. That was a lot of me talking I'll finish out the show up next here on the morning after. Go to break. See you guys later. Talk to you in a couple minutes. racing the clock's running out it all comes down to this we're talking pre-game 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 get locked in with game time decisions your hosts Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart will get you ready for game time everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best slips to back it up Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's Game Time Decisions, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. What was your reaction to the Yankees taking game one of the Subway Series last night, even up against Max Scherzer? You know, let's work backwards. Started with Jonathan Loisaga. They need to kind of piece together the closer situation. That was the thing that struck me. Of course, we can talk about Aaron Judge and, you know, Homer number 47 and all that cool stuff. But I want to talk about the setup guy that was having a down year that might turn into the closer down the stretch because that's what, you know, baseball is, right? It's all about the boring stuff. The Sports Grid Network. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. Play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game Packers. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, I all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game, Four live, wins. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid.
All right, everybody, a deep breath. 14 straight minutes of talking. Let's finish it off with about two minutes more here as we round out the morning after on this Thursday live on Sports Grid. Sirius XM Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. All across the Sports Grid Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. As we have said so many times here on this show today, it's the start of the final week of the NFL preseason. Week number three of preseason action kicks off tonight in Kansas City, as we detailed numerous times in our most recent segment. The Packers, a one and a half point road favorite against KC, a total at 35 and a half. But both of those teams have lost one game in the preseason. We don't focus on that game. We focus on an unbeaten battle tonight of preseason teams in Houston between the Texans and the Niners. Who will have a perfect preseason? Who will go a perfect 3-0? and I tell you next, here as we round out the show. So before we say farewell, and before we say goodbye, it's time for an NFL preseason best bet. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. The Houston Texans at home hosting the San Francisco 49ers. Both teams, a perfect 2-0 so far this preseason. San Francisco actually booked as a three and a half point favorite, minus 175 on that money line. So as the FanDuel Sportsbook sees it, the Niners will enter the regular season having won all three games in the preseason. I say no. The Houston Texans will win outright on the money line, but... I'm not going to be so bold here in my best bet. Just give me Houston plus three and a half. It is one of the last times we can actively bet on bad teams before we get underway in the regular season. Houston has the lowest win total on the board at four and a half for 2022. The Texans are competing. They're trying to figure out their roster. They'll do so one final time in their preseason finale at home tonight against the Niners. The morning after. Each and every weekday, live right here on Sports Grid. It starts at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm Ben Stevens. We'll talk tomorrow on a Football Friday.